Hi everybody, welcome to our third live lesson that we are doing here on the YouTube channel of Learn German with Herr Antrim. Uh, before we get started, I thought I would try out a few questions just to see if you guys paid attention the last time, uh, and also to test out our comments page and see how that's all going to work out. So, uh, if you would, try and answer the following questions in the comments just to see how things are working out for us. So, uh, wie heißt du? Wie heißt du? Wie heißt du? That's your first question. Second question, of course, is Wie alt bist du? Wie alt bist du? Wie alt bist du? And the last question, of course, is Wo wohnst du? Wo wohnst du? Wo wohnst du? Give you a couple of minutes to uh, start talking in the comments down below and uh, let me know when you guys are ready based on those comments. Okay, wir haben hier ein paar Leute. Uh, wie spät ist das? Es ist jetzt uh, 1 Uhr 8 bei mir. Das ist uh, natürlich im Nachmittag. Und das ist hier in den USA. Uh, wir haben heute einen sehr schönen sonnigen Tag. Und ja, yeah, alles ist hier gut gelaufen. Uh, wie spät ist das? 1 Uhr 8. Uh, ich bin ein bisschen, uh, ich habe mich ein bisschen verspätet, denn Ich wollte ein bisschen früher anfangen, aber ich habe andere Sachen, die ich, die ich machen musste. Um, so, I wanted to start this a little bit earlier, but uh, I had a few problems I had to uh, take care of. So, now that I'm here and started and everything, um, I'll get started into this. Uh, if you're just joining us, the uh, three questions you were supposed to answer is Wie heißt du? Wie alt bist du? And wo wohnst du? This is uh, three questions from the last time around that we had one of these live streams. And I just wanted to test your knowledge before we move on to new topics. So we got uh, Morgan Lane, sie ist 17 Jahre alt. Und uh, Taejun, uh, es ist 3 a.m. in Korea. Or es ist 3 Uhr morgens in Korea. Um, Morgan Lane kommt aus England. Uh, Freya heißt Jasmine. Und ist 26 Jahre alt und wohnt in Mexiko. Uh, sehr schön, danke, dass du zuschaust. Uh, Antonella, ich bin 22 Jahre alt und komme aus Italien. Okay, sehr schön, dass du dabei bist. Ich heiße Ludmilla. Ludmilla. Ich bin 42 Jahre alt und wohne in Moskau. Sehr schön. So, Moskau, Italien, Mexiko, England, Korea, uf, überall in, den, in der ganzen Welt. Uh, und ich heiße Morgen, ich bin 17 Jahre alt und ich komme aus England, natürlich. So, uh, today's topics that we are going to be covering, we are going to be talking about the uh, accusative case. Uh, this being the case that is used with direct objects, it's also used with certain time. Um, and, of course, prepositions that require the accusative case. Um, if you are fresh uh, out of the box, haven't learned any German, um, you may want to go back to the first couple of lessons, because uh, there we covered conjugation and uh, pronouns and that kind of thing. Um, but this lesson should be slightly more advanced, but again, still at the uh, A1 level, probably not even getting into the uh, A2 level at this point. But this is the third lesson in the series. Uh, and hopefully I will be doing one of these every month so that uh, by the time that we get done with these, sometime in December, uh, we should be uh, able to hold a conversation and uh, see how things work out in the comments. Um, hey, Nikolaus aus uh, Griechenland ist dabei. Und, uh, yeah, viele Leute hier. Sehr schön. 
Äh, so, jetzt werden wir beginnen. Los geht's! First things first, we have to figure out what is nominative and what is accusative. Uh, the problem comes up that in English, uh, no one cares. <laughs> There's, there are cases in English, we just don't bother talking about them because they're completely irrelevant. There's only the in English, there's only a or an in English, and it really doesn't matter uh, about genders of nouns, those don't exist in English, so a lot of people will, uh, will have problems with understanding what is nominative, what is accusative. So, First thing on the list is figuring out what is nominative so that we can have kind of a, a base point to start with. Um, this is who or what is acting in any given sentence. So this is the subject of the sentence if you're familiar with grammar terminology. But even if you're not familiar with the, germ, uh, with the grammar terminology, it's who or what is acting in the sentence. So let's say um, the dog is running. Okay, The dog is the thing that is doing something in the sentence, and the thing that it's doing, it's running. Um, Now, the direct object is the accusative thing, and the direct object is who or what is being acted upon. In the sentence, the dog is running, there isn't anything that is being acted upon. There's nothing being verbed there. Um, but let's say, um, I am eating a cookie. Okay? I am eating a cookie. The cookie is the thing that is being acted upon. I am the one who is acting. I'm the one eating. And the thing being eaten is then my direct object. That's the accusative thing. Now, the reason that this matters is because in German, if you haven't figured it out yet, we have three genders of nouns plus the plural article, and for each one of these, uh, we have to have the accompanying article that fits with the gender and the case. Um, and this should be our first introduction in this series to cases, um, so we'll kind of take it slowly with this system. Um, if you're not aware, we have der, die, das, and die. I always put them in this order because that's the way that I learned it. It's the way it's set up in a lot of textbooks, um, but it's not necessarily the only way. A lot of people will actually take uh, der and das and put them next to each other, uh, and this helps later on in future cases whenever you get to uh, dative and genitive where the masculine and neuter are more closely related and the feminine and plural are closely related in uh, a lot of the cases as well. So for that reason, some people will switch these up, but for me, I always do it as masculine, feminine, neuter, plural, okay? So the first one here is, if it's the subject, you have der, die, das, die. Those are your only four options as far as uh, words that mean the, okay? If you were using this as a direct object, you then have den, die, das, die as your options. Uh, den, of course, being the masculine one, die still is the feminine, das is neuter, and then die again is the plural form. So. These two forms uh, are usually set up in uh, some sort of chart, and you have to memorize the chart. Honestly, memorizing a bunch of charts isn't all that helpful to a lot of people, so I'm not going to try and do it that way this time around, uh, although I have done it that way on uh, other videos on this channel. Um, now, these all words mean the, so der, die, das, die, den, die, das, die, uh, all of those mean the. The ones directly below that are the ones that mean ein. So they're the ones that mean a or an in English. So we have ein, which is the exact same for the masculine form and the neuter form. And then we have eine, which is the feminine form. And you'll notice I have k in parentheses for the plural form, and that's because of what's down below on the bottom right box, where it says ein words also include the words that are on this list here, ein, eine, keine, and so on. But it also includes mein, dein, sein, ihr, uns, unser, euer, and kein. All of these except uh, kind is a possessive, so mine means my, dein means your, sein means his, uh, it also means its, ihr means her, it's also used for the plural they form, so it's there as well, t-h-e-i-r, and uh, it's also used with a capital I whenever it means the, uh, the formal you, so i-h-r with a capital I, that one's for the formal you, uh, your, whatever it is. Uh, as a possessive. Unser is our, uh, as in O-U-R, and then Oya is you alls, as in like more than one person that you are uh, addressing with the do form. Uh, it's kind of the ear form possessive. And then kein is a little bit different than all of those other words. This is the negative uh, ein word. This is the negated form of any ein word. So in English, if you were to say not a, you would probably be using here kein. So, that's the reason that I have the K in parentheses there for 
uh, the plural form, it's basically just because you can't say a books, okay? You can't say a followed by a plural noun, and for that reason we have to have some other letters there uh, instead of just Ina. It has to be Kina, Mina, Dina, Sina, and so on. Now, that being said, all of these forms can be used with these other words. So, mine, dine, sein, these can also be used whenever you're talking about, uh, you know, just a singular noun in the nominative case. So, let's say, uh, this is my dog. You would say, mein Hund. Mein Hund would not have an E at the end of it because this time it's a masculine noun in the nominative case. If you say, like, I like my dog, you would say, ich mag meinen Hund. I like my dog. Okay? That's using, again, using an E-N at the end of it, because it's a masculine noun in the accusative case. It's the thing being acted upon. Now, as there were with ein words, there are also additional der words, or words that count as der words. Words that don't mean the anymore, but still are categorized as uh, definite articles. So these include diese, jede, manche, solche, alle, and welche. Now, all of these words have their own individual meanings, um, which I'll go into in more depth probably in another one of these videos, but uh, for right now I'm just going to give you kind of the simplified version of them. Um, Diese means this or these or those, depending on how you're using it. Um, so this, that, these, those, um, any of those options. And you'll notice that there's an ER at the end of a lot of these words that I have here, but that can change based on the gender of the noun. So if it's masculine nominative, it uses Diese. If it's feminine nominative, or even feminine accusative, we use diese. If it is uh, neuter, then we use dieses, with an es at the end of it. Basically what I'm saying is that we have to have the ending that fits with the gender and case again. Uh, so in this video, we're only going to be talking about the nominative and accusative cases, which means that we have er, e, es, or en as our option. So there's only four options for this entire video. The other ones follow the same pattern. Uh, jede, again, is going to be the masculine form in the nominative case. Jede, with an E at the end, is going to be the one that you're using for the feminine form in the nominative and accusative case. It's also the form you're going to be using for the plural form uh, for both cases. Jede means every, so you could say like, dieser Hund, this dog, or jeder Hund, every dog. Manche is almost exclusively used with the plural form because it means some. So you would say like, uh, some nights I stay up cashing in my bad luck. Then you would say, manche nächte. That's again using the plural form because it has to be with the plural when you say some. So manche hunde, so some dogs, or uh, manche blätter, some leaves. Um, solche is uh, similar, so you would have this time such or this type of thing. Um, in this case, you would say solche, such or this kind of thing. Alle means all, and obviously is also going to be used with the plural form quite a bit. So we have like alle Hunde uh, gelingen in, in, uh, in den Himmel, so all dogs go to heaven. Uh, I'm reading a DVD from across the room at the moment is the reason that came up. Um, but alle is almost exclusively used with a plural form, same thing as manche and solche. Welche is the only one that's on the list that is a question word, and this one means which, as in welcher Hund, which dog. So welcher Hund läuft, which dog is running, mein Hund läuft, my dog is running. Okay, this for dieser, jeder is every, manche is some, solche is such, alle is all, and welche is which. The ein words that we looked at in this list is mein being my, dein being your, sein is his or its, ihr has three answers, it's either her or their or you in the formal form that's the possessive your. Unser is our, euer is the plural informal possessive you, so this is your again, but this time uh, this is the informal and plural. And then kein is the word that demeans uh, not a or uh, something along those lines. Does anybody have any questions about 
what's a subject, what's a direct object, or anything like that before we move on to some examples of these types of sentences. I'll give you a little bit to uh, ask questions in the comments before I move on, uh, so that mostly so that I can get a drink. Okay, I don't see any questions in the comments, so I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next slide. These are examples using the nominative and accusative cases, uh, using dare words and ein words. And I've separated them out so that you can see uh, the difference between dare words, the difference between ein words, and also I've paired up masculine nouns with masculine nouns, feminine nouns with feminine nouns, and so on, so that everything follows a, uh, a little bit of a pattern, so that you can follow it a little bit easier this way. So everything goes masculine, feminine, neuter, plural, and then masculine, feminine, neuter, plural, again, for each of the sentences. Top ones here are all about dare words. I uh, threw in a couple of those additional dare words just to make sure that we got those concepts down. And I also threw in a few of those uh, possessives uh, down there at the bottom for the ein words, but mostly because uh, those sentences wouldn't make a whole lot of sense with ein words all by themselves in there. So um, let's start off with the first sentence. Uh, which is der Junge. Der Junge is the boy. Hat is has. Uh, den Hund is the dog. So der Junge hat den Hund. The boy has the dog. In both of these they use the, so der and den. These are both masculine nouns, but because of the case system we can tell which one has the other. Obviously it's not that the dog has the boy, but that the boy has the dog. And for that reason, we have here, der Junge hat den Hund. Den Hund indicating that it's the direct object of the sentence, and of course, uh, den meaning that it's the accusative form of der. Second sentence is a little bit more ambiguous. This one says, die Frau kauft die Halskette. Die Frau kauft die Halskette. Die Frau is the woman, die Halskette is the necklace. Obviously, necklaces don't buy women, women buy necklaces. So, in this case, we have here die Frau, the woman, is buying, kauft, die Halskette, the necklace. Now, the reason that I said that this sentence is a little bit more ambiguous this time is because both definite articles here are die. We have die Frau and die Halskette. That means that we can't tell by looking at the article whether the subject is die Frau or if it's die Halskette. So we use two things to help us out here. First of all, logic. Obviously a woman is buying a necklace and not that the woman is being bought by the necklace. That would be weird. Um, and also this one tells us through word order that since the subject usually comes first, we put the subject there, and that kind of tells us uh, an indication that the woman is the subject here. Dieses Mädchen macht das Sauerkraut. This girl is making the sauerkraut. Dieses Mädchen has an ES at the end of it because it's a neuter noun, and since neuter nouns in the nominative and in the accusative case don't actually change, um, we have here dieses and das, which means that we can't tell based on the article which one's the subject and which one is the object. We again have to use logic and the uh, word order here to tell us what the subject is. Subject is Mädchen because she's the one that is machen the sauerkraut. Okay? She's the one who's making the sauerkraut. Alle Kinder mögen solche, solche Le Leckerbissen. Butchered that. Alle Kinder mögen solche Leckerbissen. All children like this type of treat. In this sentence here we have alle Kinder, which is plural, all children. Alle has an E at the end of it because it's a plural form, and that's what it dictates for the dare words. Solche also has an E at the end of it because, again, it's plural. Leckerbissen is normally a neuter noun, but if it's a plural form, the, the noun itself doesn't change. We just add an E to the end of the article instead of having an ES. 
So in this sentence, all children like this type of uh, treat or sweet thing. And again, the children are the subject, that's the nominative case, and the accusative object here is solche Leckerbissen, uh, this type of treat. It's the thing that is being liked. The bottom of the page here we have uh, a few more examples, and these examples again are going to be uh, the the same as before. We have again masculine nouns with masculine nouns, feminine nouns with feminine nouns, and so on. Uh, and this time we have ein words. So we start off with mein Sohn hat einen Hund. My son has a dog. This is similar to the first sentence where it was der Junge hat den Hund. The boy has the dog. This time it's my son has the, uh, has a dog. Mein Sohn hat einen Hund. Again, it has mein Sohn with no ending at all at the end of it because in the masculine form, in the nominative case, we don't need an ending. And in the accusative case, we added an en so that uh, it has here einen. Seine Frau kauft ihre Halskette. This time I use the exact same words as before, so we have this time his wife instead of the wife and her necklace uh, instead of the necklace. But it's the same sentence. The woman is buying the necklace, his, wo uh, his wife is buying the, her necklace. So, uh, same sentence again, and uh, as Tobias has pointed out, if the subject is not clear based on the articles that you're using, uh, you are going to have to use word order for subject, verb, object uh, to make sure that you know what's the subject and what's the object of the sentence. Ihr Pferd frisst mein Schnitzel. Her horse is eating my Schnitzel. Um, it's a weird sentence, and uh, I'm sorry for that, but it was just what came to me at the time that I was writing this presentation. Uh, ihr Pferd, her horse, frisst, is to eat whenever you're talking about animals. If you're using uh, Essen, it's used with people. Fressen is used with animals. Um, and don't forget that that's also an irregular verb, so it has an I there instead of an E for the RZS yes form. It also does the same thing for the do form. Mein Schnitzel, again, has no ending because it is a neuter noun, um, and neuter nouns, of course, don't have endings on their ein words until later when we get to the dative case. But wait, that's probably going to be the next, uh, next one in this series. Uh, again, the word order tells us what the subject is. The subject is the horse because the horse is the one eating the schnitzel and not the schnitzel eating the horse because that would be a really weird sci-fi film. Meine Kinder mögen ihre Leckerbissen. Meine Kinder is again my children. Ihre Leckerbissen, their treats. So my children like their treats. Uh, again, these treats here are in the plural form. The children are also plural. So we have E's at the end of both ein words. Uh, again, using the same logic as we had before. Subject, verb, object. Tom Walters says his horse would not eat any schnitzel. I'm assuming that's probably true of almost everybody's horse. Uh, if a horse eats schnitzel, then it's probably a zombie. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of a messed up sentence. Alright, does anybody have any questions about this slide before we move on to practice for you guys? Hey, Daniel from uh, Colombia uh, just joined us here today. He's apparently 21 Jahre alt. Hello, Daniel. Move on to the next slide here. Since there are no questions that I can see. Now on this slide we have a bunch of blank spaces and the reasoning behind this is uh, very simple. We have words that we're supposed to fill in the blanks with here, and you guys are going to have to help me out in these sentences. So, uh, the first one here is blank Buch hat blank Ende. So, we need to have either the book has 
an ending, no ending, something along those lines. Um, but you need to tell me what kind of a ein word or der word needs to go in the blank. So you can just put your uh, your answer in the comments down below. All you have to do is put either der, die, das, des, whatever uh, der word it is that you think needs to go in the blanks there. And uh, we'll check your answers here in just a second. Okay, we'll go ahead and do this first one as an example. I don't see anybody answering in the comments yet, so uh, I'm just going to go ahead and show you what I have down for my answers. Uh, you have ein Buch, a book, hat ein Ende. A book has an ending. Uh, we have uh, one answer here, actually, das Buch hat ein Ende. Uh, that would work as well. Tom Walters has that one correct. Das Buch uh, is the book. Hat ein Ende has an ending. Uh, Varghese has uh, another answer. Das Buch hat ein gutes Ende. Uh, the book has a good ending. And uh, again, that is a good answer as well. Um, Nicholas, uh, unfortunately, you chose the feminine gender for both of those answers. Um, and that's not going to work. We have Das Buch and ein Ende. Uh, so it's Das Buch hat ein Ende. The book has an end. Ein Buch hat ein Ende, uh, a book has an ending, uh, or something along those lines, but it can't be uh, anything that ends in an E, because this is a uh, neuter noun. Alright, let's try this out with the next one. Here I have a K in front of the blank, and that's because I want you to use a form of kind, um, so you know for sure it's definitely going to be an Ein word, um, but you have to figure out what the gender of Schule is, and uh, of course fill in the ending there. Uh, to make it a complete sentence. It says, Heute haben wir blank Schule. So, today we have blank school. I'm using this example because uh, as of last week, uh, I no longer have to go to school, so I am officially done for the summer, and uh, I can concentrate a little bit more on uh, making some YouTube videos for you guys. Freya is the first person to answer, and also the first one with the correct answer, that is, haben wir, uh, wir haben heute uh, keine Schule, we have no school. Uh, this one, of course, ends in an E, uh, looks like everybody else is getting the same answer. It is, of course, keine Schule, because this is a feminine noun. Feminine nouns have to have that E at the end of the ein word, or at the end of the der word, in fact. So, heute haben wir keine Schule, today we have no school. Uh, for this next one, I actually used a, uh, a revolver-held song, so we have blank Leben ist super, and again, you'll notice that I have here an M in front of it. That M is there because it is, again, uh, a possessive. It's an ein word again, and we have to fill it in with the correct ein word based on the case and gender. Leben is uh, a noun. We have to figure out, is this the subject of the sentence? Is this the object of the sentence? And, uh, of course, what is the gender of this noun? Uh, yeah, it looks like Wism has it uh, correct again. Mein Leben ist super. Mein Leben, meaning my life is super. Uh, if you have not seen this song, uh, go ahead and search for that in the YouTube window that you already got open anyway. Um, mein Leben ist super is a revolver held song. Um, if you don't know anything about revolver held, it's, uh, it's a German kind of almost punk rock kind of thing. Um, sounds a lot like uh, Green Day in their earlier days. Um, but this is uh, one of my personal favorite bands. And so Mein Leben ist super, one of their uh, songs that I personally like quite a bit. 
Uh, the next one, I've already seen uh, at least one person has answered already. Es gibt immer blank Grund zu feiern, which is also another Revolver Held song. Um, es gibt immer blank Grund zu feiern. It looks like Varghese uh, has the correct answer again. Es gibt immer einen Grund zu feiern. Grund is a, new, uh, is a masculine noun, um, and so it does actually matter if this is the subject or the object in this sentence. In this particular instance, S is actually our subject. Gibt is like, in English we would say there is or there are, uh, which would require the nominative case, but in German it's, it literally says it gives. Um, and this would be es gibt immer einen Grund zu feiern. There is always a reason to celebrate. Also another great revolver held song. So if you get bored later on, you can check out those two songs. Mein Leben ist super and Es, wird, es gibt immer einen Grund zu feiern. Uh, the next one is a sentence I ask myself all the time. Warum habe ich blank Geld? Warum habe ich blank Geld? In this sentence we have here Geld, which is uh, again the noun that we need to figure out the gender of and the case. And uh, we have to figure out what's the object and uh, what is the uh, subject of the sentence. Warum means why. Ich is the subject here, is I have, so why have I blank Geld. In this case we're using a neuter noun, and it's the direct object of the sentence, so even though it's the direct object, we really don't care all that much, because it's still going to have kein as our ein word. So, warum habe ich kein Geld? Why do I have no money? Uh, Nicholas wants to know what feiern means. Feiern means to celebrate, so uh, es gibt immer einen Grund zu feiern means there is always a reason to celebrate. There's always a reason to party. Next one is actually from a Xavier Naidosh uh, song, which is Blank Weg ist steinig und schwer. If you know anything about this song, it's uh, pretty easy to remember because the name of the song is also the answer to this question. Dieser, dieser Weg ist steinig und schwer. It's, uh, again, if you just look for dieser Weg, uh, it'll probably come up and you can figure out how to spell Xavier Nadeau. Um, and that is, dieser Weg ist steinig und schwer. Um, one of his better songs. It's uh, kind of an older song for him, I guess. Uh, but it is a decent song. Ich genieße blank Stunde mit dir. Genieße is uh, to enjoy. Again, ich is the subject of the sentence. That was, that's why we have e at the end of our sub uh, at the end of our verb here. Ich genieße. Um, so there's our subject, our verb. The other thing here is then our object, which is Stunde. Stunde is an hour. Mit dir is with you. Ich genieße jede Stunde mit dir. I enjoy every hour with you. Ich genieße jede Stunde mit dir. I enjoy every hour with you. Next one you might need if you're uh, having a little bit of a headache. It's blank Kopf tut mir weh. Blank Kopf tut mir weh. This one here, again, you'll notice that we have our subject at the beginning of the sentence, uh, and our conjugation of the verb tells us what the subject is again. Tut is conjugated to go with the ers yes form. It's a singular noun in the nominative case, and it is a uh, masculine noun. And so we have here, mein Kopf tut mir weh. Mein Kopf tut mir weh. My head hurts. Mein Kopf tut mir weh. My head hurts. The last one has two blanks again, like the one at the very top of the page does. Uh, this time we have, this story has blank uh, Ritter, 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 uh, night. There we go. <laughs> Losing my English words. Uh, diese Geschichte has an E, because this is a feminine noun. This is our subject of the sentence. Uh, it's the thing that has something. The something that it has 
is the Ritter in this case, which is a knight. A knight is obviously a masculine noun, so we have to have here hat einen Ritter. Diese Geschichte hat einen Ritter. This story has a knight. Or this story includes a knight. It'd probably be uh, a little bit more formal. I'll go ahead and give you a few uh, seconds to figure out if you have any questions. You can leave those down in the comments, and uh, then we'll move on from this slide here in just a minute. Oh, uh, Varghese actually has uh, an answer that I didn't think of. Diese Geschichte hat viele Ritter. This story has a lot of, uh, of knights. That is also an option, uh, although viele is not on the list of things that we had actually covered in this video, so um, it's probably why I didn't leave it on the list here, but that is a, uh, a correct answer, because the singular form of Ritter is also the same as the plural form, so uh, diese Geschichte hat viele Ritter would also work. All right, we're going to move on to the next topic on the list, and that is accusative case used with time. Um, time can be used in several different ways. Um, time can be used with the accusative case, but it also can be used with the genitive case. Um, the distinction is pretty easy to figure out. Um, if it is a definite time, so uh, a specific time, then that has to be used with the accusative case. Um, if it is a... Uh, like, someday my prince will come, that kind of thing, that is going to be used with the genitive case. Um, like, um, one day I did this thing, that would be uh, using the genitive case. But this morning, this evening, every morning, every week, every Monday, those kind of things are all going to be in the accusative case. Now, a lot of the time, you really just don't care that the time is accusative. So, for instance, in the first example I have here, Heute Morgen essen wir Frühstück. Heute Morgen essen wir Frühstück means this morning we are eating breakfast. You don't care that Heute Morgen is an accusative object because it doesn't matter as far as uh, declension is concerned. So you don't have to change Heute, you don't have to change Morgen, there is no article in front of it, you don't have to worry about any of that. Uh, I like these particular instances or these particular examples here uh, because I started all of them with the uh, time of the sentence, which means that our subject is actually shoved to the other side there. Um, if you remember our examples from last time around, we have here time, verb, subject, and then our object, um, which again shows us here the, uh, the word order options that we have. Time, verb, subject, object. Heute Morgen essen wir Frühstück. This morning, we are eating breakfast. Morgen Abend spiele ich Schach. Tomorrow evening, I am playing chess. Morgen Abend spiele ich Schach. Again, we don't care that this is an accusative object. It's going to be using here Morgen Abend. Morgen Abend doesn't have an article. It doesn't have anything that we need to decline. There's nothing to change here. It's accusative, but we just don't care. Uh, again, this is a great example, though, of our word order rules where we have the time, verb, subject, object. The next one sort of matters for the case, uh, but again, not as much as uh, the following example. But, jedes Jahr findet das Oktoberfest in München statt. Jedes Jahr findet das Oktoberfest in München statt. Every year, the Oktoberfest takes place in Munich. Huh. Oops. <laughs> Should be S-T-A-T-T -T -T at the end of the sentence. Uh, apparently my autocorrect got me there. Um, S-T-A-T-T, -T -T, not S-T-A-D-T. -T. Uh, those are two different kinds of Stadt. Jedes Jahr findet das Oktoberfest in München Stadt. S-T-A-T-T. -T. Uh, every year the Oktoberfest takes place in Munich. Um, in this particular instance here, we have jedes ja. It has an es at the end of it because the word ja is a neuter noun. Jedes means every, 
And since it's in the accusative case and it's a neuter noun, we just put es at the end of our uh, at the end of our dare word. Jeden Morgen putze ich mir die Zähne. Every morning I brush my teeth. In this sentence we have jeden Morgen because Morgen is a masculine noun. Every then has to be declined, has to be changed to fit the case and gender. Since the time element here is accusative and masculine, we have to have en at the end of the dare word. Jeden Morgen instead of jeder. Jeden Morgen putze ich mir die Zähne. Every morning I brush my teeth. Diese Woche schläft der Mann bis acht. This week the man is sleeping until eight. This time we have two time elements. One is in, contained in the uh, prepositional phrase bis acht. That's until eight. That's also a time. Um, but the very beginning of the sentence here we have diese Woche, this week. That is also accusative case because it's time. It's definite time. Uh, it's definite time, so it has to be accusative again, and it's a feminine noun, so we have an E here at the end of the dare word. Jeden Montag lade ich ein Video hoch. Every Monday I upload a video. Jeden Montag lade ich ein Video hoch. Jeden Montag is every Monday. Again, Monday is a masculine noun, so when we use this here with an article, we have to use an article that fits for the accusative case with a masculine noun. Jeden Montag, every Monday. The last topic that I want to talk about today is the accusative case when it's used with prepositions. And uh, these are the prepositions that I want to talk about today. There are a few other ones that are uh, a little bit uh, more seldom used. However, uh, these are the ones that most people will talk about. Uh, I put them in this order because this is the easiest way for me to be um, to get them to stick in my brain. Um, so für, um, durch, ohne, gegen. That spells out FUDOG if you take the first letter of each one. F-U-D-O-G. Für, um, durch, ohne, gegen. And I always remember that FUDOG is accusative. It's just my little mnemonic device that I picked up whenever I was still in high school. Für, um, durch, ohne, gegen. FUDOG. The last two, bis and entlang, would be B, so um, B-E. Some people would just say, like, b foo dog. Um, there's also, like, B-O fudge um, is another one that some people use. But uh, whatever version you want to use, as long as you remember that für, um, durch, ohne, gegen, bis and entlang are all used with the accusative case. I also put entlang at the end of the list because that one's the most confusing on the list. Um, it's a, a little bit weird, and for that reason, uh, I just went ahead and left it down there at the bottom of the list so I can explain here in a minute. Für is probably the easiest one because it means the exact same thing as it does in English, so for. Für means for. Für meine Schwester, for my sister. Für meine Schwester, for my sister. Um means around, unless of course you're talking about time, in which case it means at which is a little bit confusing, especially when you get down to gegen here in a little bit. Uh, but for right now, just remember that um, when you mean it to be around an object, that's um, meaning around. It can also mean at a particular time, so um drei Uhr, um vier Uhr, and so on, at that particular time. Um die Ecke would be an example of around the corner, using um meaning around. Um die Ecke, around the corner. Durch means through, durch, through. This one's pretty simple as well, durch den Tunnel, through the tunnel. You'll notice that we used here den Tunnel because it is a masculine noun and it's followed uh, after an accusative preposition. The reason these accusative prepositions are called accusative prepositions, in case you hadn't picked it up yet, is because directly after them, there's the accusative case, durch den Tunnel, through the tunnel, accusative case. Ona, without, as in ona den Hund, without the dog. Again, we use den Hund because it's a masculine noun that followed an accusative preposition. An accusative preposition is followed by the accusative case, hence the name. Gegen, gegen means against. Whenever you're, you know, throwing something against a wall or something like that, um, 
But when you're talking about time, it means around. So gegen drei Uhr, around three o'clock, as opposed to um drei Uhr, which means at three o'clock. There's a slight subtle difference between the two of them, uh, but there is uh, one of them is used with time, the other one is used with uh, an object. So against is used with an object, around is used with time. Gegen die Wand, against the wall, uh, would be used with an object there. Bis is relatively simple, um, it means until, and usually the reason that most people leave this off of the list is because it's often paired up with a, uh, with a dative preposition, so bis zum, uh, until that. Um, but in the example I have here, bis diesen Dienstag. Um, in this case, I would actually translate it as by, like by, um, meaning by this Tuesday, by, uh, by this Tuesday, bis diesen Dienstag. Until this Tuesday would also work as a translation, but it's probably not going to fit uh, with the rest of your sentence if you actually filled out the rest of the sentence here. And the last one, as I mentioned, the reason that I left it uh, towards the bottom of the list is because it's weird. You'll notice that all of the other ones we had für meine Schwester, um die Ecke, durch den Tunnel, ohne den Hund, gegen die Wand, bis diesen Dienstag. All of them started with the preposition, and then you had your object. The next one is a little bit weird because in order for entlang to be used with the accusative case, it has to go after the uh, object of the preposition. So in this case, we have die Straße entlang, which is literally speaking the street along. But in English, we would say along the street. In German, you say die Straße entlang. If you're using entlang and you put it in front of the object, then it becomes a dative preposition, and that's just weird, and so um, this is why it's usually left off of a lot of people's lists of accusative prepositions, uh, but it's also the reason that I put it at the bottom of my list here. Um, anyway, so these are the uh, prepositions that we have. Für means for, um means around, durch means through, ohne means without, Gegen means against, bis means until, and entlang means along. Now we again have some examples. So for this one we have an example of each of the prepositions that I had before, and we have to fill in the first blank with a uh, preposition and the second blank with an article. So this first one here, it says das Kind wirft den Ball blank blank Wand. So the first example here, das Kind wirft den Ball, blank, blank, Wand. Go ahead and write your answers down in the comments, and uh, I'll see how many of you can get this one correct. Looks like uh, Tobias gave us a comment here of Entlang dieser Straße gibt es viele Tankstellen, uh, which is along this street there are a lot of uh, gas stations. Uh, and yes, that is another example of how to use the, uh, the preposition Entlang, uh, but again that is using it as a dative preposition, uh, and therefore I didn't use those type of examples in this, but uh, that is a, a good example of how to use the preposition Entlang if you're going to put it in front of the uh, of the object. Uh, look, uh, looks like Varghese uh, has the uh, correct answer here. First blank here we have gegen, against, die Wand, the wall. Das Kind wirft den Ball gegen die Wand. The child is throwing the ball against the wall. So if you ever get bored whenever you're a kid, one of the things you do is you just throw a ball against the wall, catch the ball again. Just keep on throwing. It's uh, an easy thing to do for people who uh, don't have friends, and so you just throw the ball against the wall instead of playing catch with someone else. Das Kind wirft den Ball gegen die Wand. The child is throwing the ball against the wall. Die Kinder schwimmen blank blank Wasser. Now there are a few options for this one, so just keep in mind that we are using here the accusative case with accusative prepositions. Um, so even though I would personally say a different preposition in this sentence, uh, keep in mind that I'm looking for a 
uh, a form here using an accusative preposition. Die Kinder schwimmen blank blank Wasser. Uh, to answer Freya's question, yes, the uh, the verb in the first sentence here is werfen, W-E-R-F-E-N. Wirft is the uh, the heirs yes form or the uh, third person singular form, so uh, the he she it form, and uh, it is an irregular verb, as I mentioned before, with one of the other verbs, and uh, it has to take an I instead of an E for the do and heirs yes forms because of that. Alright, the next one here we have die Kinder schwimmen durch das Wasser. The children are swimming through the water. Durch das Wasser. As I mentioned before, I would probably actually use im Wasser or in dem Wasser, um, which is a dative one, but for the purposes of this video, again, we're sticking with the accusative prepositions. Durch das Wasser. The children are swimming through the water. Durch das Wasser. Er bewirbt sich blank blank Stelle. This one's a little bit more complicated because if you're still at the A1 level, you're probably not going to be familiar with the verb bewerben. Sich bewerben means to apply. So er bewirbt sich, he applies. Uh, while we're waiting on answers for the uh, third example here, Vargese, uh, Vargese uh, has a question, the Unterschied zwischen Schwimmen im Wasser und ins Wasser. Uh, Im Wasser is dative because you're swimming in the water. If you are swimming into the water, that would be using ins, which uh, is kind of a physical impossibility unless you're like swimming from the land into the water. Um, you can dive into the water, you can jump into the water, that would be ins but you can't use ins once you're already there. Once you're already there, it becomes dative case. So, im Wasser is where you are, the stationary form. You're not going out of the water or into the water. You're staying there. Im Wasser, if you're jumping into the water, that's using motion, and that has to be used with the accusative case, ins Wasser. Uh, looks like Freya has the correct answer here for the third answer. We have er bewirbt sich für die Stelle. He is applying for the uh, position or the job. Um, and I also have here eine Stelle because he is applying for a, uh, a job or uh, a place. So whatever spot it is. Um, could be die, could be eine. Doesn't really matter which one you choose there. Uh, er bewirbt sich für die Stelle oder für eine Stelle. Fourth example here, we have Deine Arbeit muss blank Ende des Monats fertig sein. Here we get a little bit more complicated on you. I used a form of müssen, which is muss. Uh, that's a modal auxiliary, which is why we have here a form of sein at the end of the sentence. So, muss sein, has to be. Deine Arbeit muss sein, your work has to be fertig, which is the adjective that it has to be, it has to be finished, blank, Ende des Monats. Oh yeah, uh, looks like somebody who made the suggestion that I could actually use um die Stelle uh, for sich bewerben, and that is also correct. You could use um there. Uh, I just forgot to put it on the list here. Für or um eine Stelle. Uh, looks like we got one answer here from Navin, Navnit. 
uh, is going to be telling us the answer to the fourth one. Um, Deine Arbeit muss bis Ende des Monats fertig sein. Deine Arbeit muss bis Ende des Monats fertig sein. Your work has to be finished by the end of the month. Fifth example on our list, der Hund läuft blank blank Ecke. Der Hund läuft blank blank Ecke. Der Hund läuft blank blank Ecke. Of course, the verb laufen is the verb here. Laufen takes an umlaut for the RZS form, so der Hund läuft. The dog is running. And then we want to know where it's running. Apparently, Ecke is the word for a, uh, a corner, so you would say it is running um die Ecke. Der Hund läuft um die Ecke. Der Hund läuft um die Ecke. The dog is running around the corner. Obviously he's running around it, can't run through it, can't run for it. So we have to use here um die Ecke. Wir laufen blank weg blank. This one should be pretty easy considering there's a blank after the noun. Wir laufen, again using the form of laufen that goes with via, which would be we are running. Weg is a path or a way, and uh, as we had mentioned before, this is a masculine noun, since we're obviously talking about the accusative case, so this one here is accusative. Den Weg, and since it's the one that has a blank after the noun here, we have entlang. Wir laufen den Weg entlang. We are walking along the path. Ein Wohnzimmer ist nicht komplett blank blank build. Ein Wohnzimmer ist nicht komplett blank blank build. A living room is not complete blank blank picture. We have to figure out what is the uh, gender of build. Build is of course a neuter noun. Neuter nouns in the accusative case just stay the same as they were in the nominative. Um, in this case, we're going to be using an ein word because the picture probably wouldn't make as much sense. But we would have here ona, ein Bild. So a living room is not complete without a picture. A living room is not complete without a picture. Ona, ein Bild. Does anybody have any other questions about this particular section here for the uh, the practice on that? All right, that is the end of this uh, particular slideshow that I have. I just have a few uh, announcements and stuff that we're going to go through. Um, just to make sure that you guys know what's coming up. Uh, the next live stream that I am planning on doing is Wednesday, June 21st at 1 p.m. Chicago time. Um, so the, that's uh, the 21st. It's a Wednesday, and uh, that'll be next month towards the uh, middle of the month this time instead of the very end of the month like we did this time. Um, so you only got about two and a half weeks to wait until the next one. Um, Wednesday... June 21st, 1 p.m. Again, this is Chicago time uh, because I live here in Illinois, so it's easiest just to tell people it's Chicago time. Um, it's actually officially central time, uh, which is like seven hours ahead of Germany. Anyway, 
this is uh, seven hours behind Germany. Anyway, um, then I also have a thing on here that you should totally vote for me for the uh, top 100 language learning channels of uh, YouTube. So if you haven't already done that, you can just get there by going to bit.ly slash v-o-t-e-g-w-a. It's like bit.ly slash vote German with Antrim, vote G-W-A. Bitly is uh, just a URL shortener that I use just so that you can remember that. Uh, Drei Minuten Deutsch. The real question is, will I ever actually make another episode of Drei Minuten Deutsch? Um, and the answer is maybe. So I'm starting to work a little bit ahead. Uh, I'm starting to write scripts for next week already. Uh, I plan on recording a video for this week for Friday uh, after I get done with this live stream here. And that means that I can go on and do Monday's video for the next one. Um, what I'm planning on doing, though, hopefully, is starting to write some scripts occasionally for Drei Minuten Deutsch, and then uh, getting it set up so that um, I can kind of get ahead and then release a Drei Minuten Deutsch maybe every other week or maybe once a month, something along those lines. Um, but hopefully Drei Minuten Deutsch will be making an occasional return, uh, but again, it won't be a, uh, a very big return. It won't be a weekly thing like I had before. Um, and then, of course, I want to have a uh, shameless plug of my Patreon page. If you are not supporting me on Patreon and you would like to support me, that would be great. I appreciate any support that I can get. Uh, for five bucks a month, you get worksheets and copies of my scripts. Um, and, of course, uh, those that uh, extra donation goes towards helping me get uh, new new equipment and also um, you know, just keeping the channel running because uh, my website does cost a little bit of money each month to keep my website up, um, and that's germanwithantrum.com if you haven't been there. Um, but these things do cost me a little bit of money, and uh, the ad revenue that I have off of YouTube is basically non-existent. So, um, you know, if you want to support me, great. If you can't support me, I also understand that just fine. So, um, but I just thought I'd throw in a shameless self-promotion of my Patreon page. Um, which you can find linked in the description uh, of basically every video I've ever made. So if you're looking for that, it's on there as well. Uh, but that is all I've got for today. Thank you so much for your attention today, um, and I will see you on the 21st of June, uh, or you can see me on Friday whenever I'm talking about another uh, B1, B2 video. So 